Okay, so I figured it was time to go a little bit more depth into tuning versus just the bass stuff because I believe a lot of my bass stuff didn't actually cover uh, timing. So um, we're going to go over a few things here. So you have your RPMs here at the top. We have your spark air mass here. Now, in order to develop the zones, you need to log your vehicle and you need to log air mass and see where the air mass and the RPM is the vehicle. Now, with that said, uh, most vehicles right around this point is your cruising. Okay. From here, for most vehicles, is your wide open throttle. Now, the part of the country I'm in, this right here, this is a... Uh, about the air mass that we get um, it's just we're high elevation we can't really get any higher okay now for those of you in other parts of the country uh, you know you in closer to sea level you might be in this area here uh, some vehicles I've seen up even 104 and 108 I actually saw a, car, a vehicle with a cam today that was hitting 104 or 108 even at our elevation now Obviously, as uh, air mass and spark goes up, you head this way, or air mass and RPM, and then it kind of tapers off and goes straight over. This is a 14 GMC Sierra 1500. Um, if Depending on what kind of information you guys have read, most of you should know by now that the um, LS engine uh, makes good power uh, typically between about 19 and uh, I don't know 26 degrees of timing depending on where you're on the country modifications blah 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 things like that most of my Silverados I like to run yeah somewhere around 20 um, so uh, I'm gonna kind of just do some things here just so you can kind of see uh, kind of an idea of what we would do um, but you know, you don't want to just copy this stuff because this is not um, everybody's vehicle. So one of the first things we do is we remove the negative timing. Now, the only time that you would keep the negative timing is when you are, I mean, you're never going to hit this area. This is an area you're not, you're not going to hit this area. The only time you're going to hit this area is when you are somewhere around here and you let off and it quick drops over here. Um, so we, we just zero that out just to get rid of it. Um, then from there, uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the things here, uh, we're going to go, let's take a look here. Let's type in 20 here. 20 is, that's, that's my number here. That's going to be my magic number. Let's type in 21 here. Okay, let's go from here to here, and let's make this, okay. Now, we're going to take, and I'm going to kind of make a, um, a triangle here. Because at a certain load, you're going to want the timing to fall off so it's kind of what what's happening here um, is we want to be able to run less timing and less timing as the RPM gets higher uh, versus the load whatever so 18 18 18 okay as you can see this kind of does a similar method there then what you're going to do is we're just going to kind of do this and we're going to ramp it up a little bit I missed that one up So there's gonna be some few areas that we're gonna to add to here. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do 
this is now what this is I should say is this is this is a base timing table so like this is the the timing table you just throw you you do to throw in just to kind of see where you're at because the stock timing table is awful it is legitimately just it, it's garbage okay Okay. Then I typically from here to here we're gonna go now this is a high octane table. Don't pay attention to what table we're on because this is just going over a general uh, table idea, I guess. Uh, then we're gonna go from here to here. And we're gonna kind of mess around with the timing a little bit, ramp it up a little bit better. Okay, let's pull this over. Okay, and you see here, this is, this is a lot of this is kind of still kind of jaggedy. Okay, so we're gonna want to take from here to over. So where were we at? We were at about 4,800. We're gonna hit it a couple times, to kind of smooth it out. And I think we were over here. And then kind of around this area here. Now, I wonder if it'll, okay. So, let's take a look here. I'm not a big fan of this, like right here. This, this humping up, I feel like the majority of the timing should be in the first cell. Okay, so what we're going to do here, is we're going to do this, because you want the timing to be smooth, and again, a lot of these places are areas that you're never going to see. Now. Three degrees um, is a real common number I like to use because most vehicles can take three degrees of timing without any type of negative side effects, anything like that. Okay, so it's definitely something where you shouldn't feel like it's not something that you can do. Um, now, what you're going to see here is your cruising cells, let's say most trucks at uh, 65 on the highway are cruising around 2,000 RPMs, 65 to 70. Uh, air mass is probably going to be 20 to 32. So you're actually going to want to take in this area here because this is going to be your kind of like your cruising area. Uh, and we're going to want to add, we're going to add two more degrees here. Uh, because when we smoothed it out, we lost some of that stuff, okay? Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to open up the compare. And the compare file that I'm going to open is going to be a stock version. Or is, uh, sorry, the exact same file, okay? So we're going to open up the exact same file as a compare. And we're going to look at it here. What you're seeing here is the differences between the two files, okay? Um, obviously this is where we got rid of the negative timing and this is how much more timing we're running over stock here this is a positive these blue numbers are typically a negative number uh, a lot of times you can go back through and just kind of zero these out uh, but again you want the timing table to be smooth so transition smooth okay so this is kind of like a general idea of, of how you want to set it up you know obviously from there you're gonna to want to log the timing you want to make sure you're not getting any lock retard things like that um, for those of you who have gen 4 vehicles you can set up a horsepower PID so that way you can or I'm sorry a torque PID so you can see what kind of torque it's making so you can pick a set RPM and just hold the vehicle there and see how much power it's making at let's say 25 degrees then you could go out on the street and you could do it again at 27, at 20, whatever, you can see where your max base torque is for that. 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to open up a um, this same vehicle, but the, the tuned version of it. So this is the, the tuned version of that same vehicle. Um, let's take a look here. You see the map there. I see the map is nice and smooth. Everything is is built properly. Um, this is a table that I personally use a lot. I've got good uh, results with it. Um, we are seeing a good three miles per gallon on a lot of Silverados over stock. So, um, but like I said, it's you don't want to just copy someone's table. You want the numbers that you use to. You want to be able to go out and figure those out on your own, and you want to go out through logging. And through logging, you're going to figure out a lot of that stuff. So, let's see here. I'm going to attempt to open up a log real quick here and kind of see what kind of information we have that I can show you guys real quick. So, Let's open up the biggest log we have here. No idea what vehicle it's going to be, so we'll find out here. 2011 Camaro SS, October 19, 2018. All right, there's gonna be a hell of a lot of data here. This is a very old, very old log. Okay, so um, torque. This is what we're talking about, about a torque PID. You can literally see how much torque the motor's making based on the tune file. Um, this car, uh, this is 700 horsepower, 700 wheel horsepower, naturally aspirated built LS7 Camaro. Okay, so we have the torque PID, we have the horsepower PID. Um, now these, these aren't completely accurate, but they work very well as a tuning tool. Okay, so for those of you that want to do the torque PID, you're going to need to have this data here. So you're more than welcome to pause the video and, and look. Now, you are going to need cylinder air mass and engine speed in here and in here for it to show up in here properly. Okay, so now what I was talking about, let's see if I get this... Uh, car is doing freaking 80 miles an hour. So I picked one that is absolutely not doing any um, idling at all. So what it looks like here is I was driving down the highway. Okay, so if you're looking here, you have cylinder air mass and you have RPM and you have the amount of torque. Okay, so you go here to spark and see we have that as average. So we're averaging 27.7 degrees of timing. Right there, it is calling for 28 degrees of timing. And it's making 320 foot-pounds of torque. Now, you can, like I said, through logging, you can kind of figure out where things need to be um, in order to make the most amount of torque, which is going to get you the best fuel mileage uh, as well. Um, trying to remember if there's anything else I wanted to say. You also want to log spark retard, spark, um, and you can look here, there, no spark retard at all, literally ever on this vehicle. Uh, this is a very well-built vehicle, uh, and the, the tuning on it turned out amazing. So I don't know if there's any really wide open throttle points. It looks like we never broke 4,800 RPMs. Um, and you're going to, same thing with the PIDs for spark. This is what your spark PID needs to look like. Same thing, anything in here needs to be here and here. Same thing with spark retard. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I know I'm sure I left out all kinds of stuff here when it comes to tuning for timing. Uh, but there, there's so much information out there that it, it, it can be hard to um, figure it out. So um, just message me, subscribe, whatever. Um, and uh, I'll try to make more videos and answer more questions as we go.